Hello everyone and welcome back to this Next.js and Strapi tutorial series. In the previous videos, we created the uh, entity model uh, from this entity relation diagram. Okay, so we map that uh, diagram to uh, uh, different types, uh, entity types in, in Strapi. And we also populated the, um, the, um, the, the, the CMS with some data. Here you can see we have six jobs. Uh, two companies, nine tags, okay? So it's about time that we uh, fetch the data in this CMS and uh, display them in our app uh, that we, for which we, we did the scaffolding in the very first lesson of this uh, tutorial, right? So remember that. Um, so the, like I said in the tutorial, in the uh, introduction uh, lesson, the purpose of this uh, tutorial series will not be on uh, doing the components, basically the React and Tailwind components, or namely, we're gonna put our attention on how uh, to pull the data instead of pulling them from Contentful, we're gonna be pulling them from um, uh, Strapi because remember, um, the, the goal of this tutorial is to show you that, okay, we have this nice UI fetching the data from Contentful uh, at the moment, but we can rely on exactly the same without changing a single line of code, but a simple environment variable here uh, by just toggling this to Strapi, okay? And restarting the application, we'll be uh, consuming the Strapi API and not the Contentful and everything else remaining the same, the application should still work, okay? So our attention is gonna be uh, on, in, in the next couple of lessons only on the data layer. So without further ado, let's start implementing the data layer. So if I zoom in a little bit here, you see that uh, for the Contentful um, version, we have a client, which is basically uh, responsible for communication with uh, Contentful. And uh, we have uh, company.js, which is uh, responsible for fetching companies, the company slogs, uh, company by slog, basically all everything that is related to fetching company. Likewise, everything that's related to fetching uh, information related to jobs is in the job.js and some utils for data cleaning and passing and so on, okay? So let's do exactly the same. Let's start with the scaffolding and uh, let me create another terminal here. I'm gonna do the same as to make the strapy data, uh, data layer strapy, okay? And I'm gonna create those three files that we have there, those four files. So uh, client, content, company, job, and utils, okay? And um, obviously the first thing we wanna do here in our um, in our uh, utils, index.js in the data layer, where we are exporting the data source, we want to make sure that uh, we are now also adding Strapi, okay? So let me bring this variable at the top here for to clean a bit the code, okay? So I'm gonna copy all this. I'm gonna just copy past like this, all right? Uh, let me bring that back. Very good. I'm just gonna put Strapi here, right? Everywhere here where we have Contentful, I'm going to put Strapi, okay, Strapi, this, Strapi, again here, Strapi, here, Strapi, here, Strapi, here, here, copy this, oops, alright, so basically we are exporting everything when this data engine variable is set to uh, Strapi, then yeah, we are exporting the Strapi APIs and only those, okay? So I hope you understand this code. So I'm gonna cover a little bit like this so you don't see my uh, production values. So here, all right, so it's the Strapi. I thought it was the contentful. So now um, everything is good. So let me close this, but yeah, in your case, what you wanna do, the other environment variables that you wanna add are these three so data layer engine uh, should be to, uh, set to strapi strapi api base url should be uh to be this value um images strapi images domain should be this because remember uh next years uh when you are doing the export uh here you need to give you need to tell next years like which domain it should consider for your images right so that's what you're we are doing here um in this file here okay and for the api key obviously i'm going to show you how to create one and uh, you you'll have to add it to your env.local all right not even the local example but env.local this is just a dummy value so you don't see my credentials um 
now that we have this okay so we have now uh, uh, um, uh, data sources we are exporting data sources um, coming from strapi at this stage because the engine is set to strapi okay so let's create some apis um, queries all right let's create the first one to fetch um to fetch um companies so i have the code here very quickly um let me import obviously we install axios the first one thing that we also need to do because you're going to use we're going to need axios to fetch the data let's install axios very good now the other thing let's import axios now all right let's create a query um export const um get companies equals to async okay and let's create a very very simple query i'm going to copy the code here so i don't waste your time it's slow typing and then this variable here as well so basically what we're doing here we are telling uh strapi okay we're making a, a, um, a get request to Strapi, okay? Because remember, API base URL, we have this here, API base URL, uh, where we deployed our um, Strapi, remember? This is it here, port 1337, okay? So now we are consuming the API on that, on that port, uh, like this, with this query, raw data. The first one is basically returned by uh, Axios. Axios um, puts every uh, data in the response in the data um, attribute. And the second one is one coming from Strapi, okay? So now we have this, let's try to consume this. Well, where do we need this? Well, um, all the API, all the endpoints that we create, normally we will consume them in the pages of our API. Uh, of our application basically here for example you should go to the uh this application here the data source you see we get the slogs and then we get the, the the job if i go to company it's more or less the same thing so we call the data source okay and we get company by slog company jobs by company id okay so like i said this this uh, tutorial is going to put the, the emphasis on the api layer uh and towards the end and only the end we're gonna see how all everything comes together nicely uh to uh create our api to create our ui so for this i'm gonna create a special route called test trappy where we're gonna be doing our implementations for now it's test strappy strappy very good okay so i'm just gonna copy whatever is in the hello version here like this in the very very good and what i'm gonna do is simple i'm gonna import uh, the data source okay import data source from the data layer very good uh here also i need to add an async because we will need to um, um call data source which is a, a get companies which is an await uh, which which requires an await companies very good equals to await data source you see you already have get companies this very good okay and then res let's just put here uh, let's let's call this data okay whatever we, we return put it here and my assumption is that this is not going to work because let's go to port api dot test trophy it's not going to work okay and the reason is simple uh, it's because um, obviously we haven't um, we don't we don't have any uh, authentication going on it I don't know if I have something here uh, I don't have anything in the uh, console log because this is happening in the backend but you can see here the error message 403 right request failed okay and the reason is because um, at the moment we are making a query to Strapi without being authenticated right so you don't want your data to be out there in the open uh, and everyone uh, being able to read it unless they have access to well there are two ways to give access to uh, the api in strapi one way is to um give the roles like like the first way basically which is 
uh, definitely not recommend it is to make your API you go to settings and then roles public and make everything accessible to everyone um, uh, who is not authenticated uh, they can read create or whatever uh, delete find okay and if I click here on upload oh, no, no, on save I try again you see now it works right fantastic now we have all the two companies that are in our database now we are able to read them and by the way i'm using an extension to make this uh, device probably if you don't have the extent chrome extension that i'm using it's going to look like this for you but i'm using an extension um, that beautifies the json if you type json uh, chrome extension you'll find there are many out there okay so now you see we are able to fetch the data but obviously this is terrible from a security perspective uh so we definitely don't want to do this so i'm going to unselect this the other alternative is to um you have authenticated users so you can give access yeah authenticated users have uh, full credentials the one one way to communicate with the api could be to make authenticated queries meaning you'll pass in um when you do the query here uh in uh company.js here will be to pass like um, something to with the, with the user email and password, but that's not the best way. I think the best way to do this kind of queries is to uh, leverage on uh, API keys, API tokens. Okay, so basically with an API token, um, you create one here. I've already created one, but just so you see, uh, Sharpie uh, live tutorial tutorial API key. Yeah, I'm going to give you select read only or full access read only is like the name implies it's going to give read only access but full access is also give access to delete create uh, and update things so I think this is the one we want but you have to keep that uh, very secure and also strappy here well, when you do it strappy lets you know that you're only going to be able to see this once and only once okay so you have to make sure that you copy this and save it somewhere secure uh, where you and only you on trusted people can have access to it and then you save this and you have to you need to add this to um, this is where you need to add this one obviously you don't add it in the example file you add it to the dot local file um, I'm just showing you here so you don't see my uh, uh, production uh, credentials okay so you copy this and you put it in the env.local and once you do that i already have those credentials right once you do that you need to um uh, now make an authenticated query here um with strapi so how do we do it how do we do that well it's very simple we simply um add a header to our um to our um axios object here so like this basically you, you get this swipe api key before making the query uh, you add this uh, authorization bearer swipe api key okay and let's see it should work again it should definitely work if i comment these lines out and i try again it's definitely not going to work anymore because we are not authenticated okay so let's try that again save is it saved First of all, I remove the rows here for unauthenticated people. Public, have I saved this? Save, okay. I should not be able to see that anymore. Uh, okay, let's see. Strapy, strapy. Let's see. <laughs> let's see. Okay. Um, this should definitely not work. If it's a caching issue or what, let's see, let's see. Let me refresh this and see. Let me close this. NPM, NPM, Oops. NPM run dev. Again, very good. I think this should not work. You see, we still get that thing. It was a caching issue with my browser, indeed. So now we have that issue again. Uh, console log permission denied. All right. So um, now, if I go again and I activate, I uncomment this out. 
like this okay refresh it should now work right it should now work uh if i comment this out again don't know why it wasn't working before but yeah if i comment this out again and i refresh you see it's still there but it's i think it's a caching issue it's it's, it's it has to do with the caching okay so but you can see how to authenticate the queries but one thing that you notice is that we have to add this um, kind of not ugly but um, boilerplate code uh, to our company but remember we also have like job uh, so ideally you don't want to do this in every file where you're fetching the data so i think the best thing to do is to just copy all of this and then copy it here Okay, and export this version of Axios like this. Okay, export default. Very good. And then simply here, import Axios from our client. And import the modified version of Axios that we have here like this, and it should be fine. Okay, let's just to make sure that we're not facing any caching issue. Close this, npm run dev restart and say it should work like a breeze fantastic so now we know how to authenticate to strapi and to fetch the data uh, in this case you're fetching the the the, the job the companies let's do let's try to fetch also the jobs okay so let's copy this let's just add it here let's copy everything that we have here and just like this okay get jobs i'm just going to simply change here jobs jobs like this okay and if i visit the link this shopee obviously i need to change it here as well change the function that i'm calling get jobs it's a different point now let's call this what's going on um this is some strong caching going on here um let me refresh this okay yeah, it's something with my browser. I'll figure that out in the next video. It's caching aggressively. Okay, so you see here, um, now we are fetching the jobs instead of the companies. And that's basically it. Now we are authenticated and we're able to fetch the data that we need. Uh, that's it. I'm going to wrap, it thing, wrap things up here for this video. Um, and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you for watching. Bye.